What's up guys, Axis here with day 6 of modeling week and today I'm going to be showing you how to create uh, this model here that I created for Saw. And um, it's not a very complex uh, style but a lot of people use it just because um, you can make something look really um, kind of difficult and you know uh, complicated without it actually being that. Um, just by using cloners and various different um, objects in Cinema 4D. So you don't really need much experience for this, I'm going to be showing you to create this main part and also the bit at the start uh, where all the tubes kind of uh, contract and then uh, open up to make this entire uh, main bit of the model kind of reveal. So we're just going to get into Cinema 4D right now uh, and I'm going to be showing you to do this. So basically this whole thing is made from a bunch of uh, lofts. Um, I'm going to make the lofts first because they're probably the uh, hardest part of the intro uh, or the model, it's not really uh, that difficult anyway uh, but I'll just be showing you how to do it, what you do is you create a loft and then you put a circle material or circle spline inside of the uh, loft so if you hold shift it will make the ch uh, circle uh, a child of the loft so now what we can do is we can um, basically you're gonna have to get used to changing between E and T as you can see if I do this it changes between move which is E and T which is scale and you're gonna have to get used to holding uh, controller command when moving so you can create a duplicate as you can see it's created a little extrude here so you can really there's really no um, there's really no set method to doing this you just kinda go crazy uh, and you know just scaling it up here while holding control and I'll create a new bit, move it along move, uh, and then T, move it down. I'll do a bunch of these just create something weird just mess about with controls at first so you can get used to how it all works So got some kind of weird here, but kind of like it. And at the end, I'm just going to scale down here, and then I'm going to move slightly further up. Ooh. Make sure you hold Command or uh, Control for the entirety of it, and then just do a new one at the end. There we go. And that's how you kind of create a smooth uh, tip for this. Uh, and as you can see, if we zoom in, you're going to be able to see some of the polygons uh, here. And if you don't want these, we're going to be doing some close-ups and you can put this on the subsurface. Uh, or you can go in here and turn up the, the mesh uh, subdivisions on U uh, or V. But I prefer to use a subsurface uh, because I can easily just turn this off. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's just easier for me to kind of use with a bunch of different cloners. Anyway. Uh, now what we're going to do is the main part, I'm going to leave this part in the middle because in the intro if you look uh, you can see that there's a bit behind here but the main part is a bunch of cloners so I'm going to duplicate this, hold alt, go into cloner and it will make the subdivision a child of the cloner. Now if we put this into radial uh, and then we go into transform and we go ahead and mess about with the, the Y rotation on the transform you can see we're getting this kind of cool uh, this cool separation of all the cloning objects I can also scale this down a bit make it look slightly more reasonable and another thing is render instances now render instances basically uh, long story short it will speed up your render but, but basically if you have it off it will it will kind of render each individual um, object uh, like one by one but if you have instances it's kind of more of a pointer for the cloner um, it, it doesn't really put so much strain on any of your components um, it's a really bad explanation of how it actually works but uh, it's something like that something along those lines uh, so if I just increase the radius you might be able to see the bottom of it and uh, you might not want that if you're making the radius quite high so if I go into here and I can just drag out the back end of it which will be the first circle here and as you can see uh, now we can't see any of the back edges and then what we do is we hit this into another cloner after clicking render instances uh, this will 
like really speed up the render time and also it will make the kind of workflow in the viewport a lot easier to work around without any um, lag. So yeah, hold alt, go to cloner again. I'm going to go to linear, I'm sorry on linear, put the uh, y to zero and then we're going to move some of these back on the z. And then we go to MoGraph, Effector, and uh, Step. And from here you can see, uh, make sure you're also selecting the the cloner when you're going to make a new uh, effector here. And also make sure this is on render instances so we can speed up some of our work. It's a really cool effector um, and it just kind of can create some really cool effects which is what I use for the saw one. So if I click rotation as well, we can go on to the Z rotation and make kind of random rotation here. We can even add some more uh, to the count, create a ton of them behind it. And then I might also make the middle one a bit more recessed uh, and then duplicate it maybe and make it bigger. And then what you can do is you can put a logo in the middle of here, um, which I'm not going to do. I do have a video on how to, uh, make these uh, the logos or paths from Photoshop uh, go into Cinema 4D so you can check that out. I th believe it's like day, I think it's a day before this, so day 5 which is a neon one where I show you how to um, use Illustrator to extract the paths from logos and text and whatnot. So go and check that out, I probably have a card annotation in the top right. Um, so now that we've got this pretty crazy actually, I kind of like it. Um, now what you can do is you can start animating this, so if I go into the, uh, the effector, um, in fact maybe we should just animate the, the uh, rotation. I could just move these a bit if you want to mess about with the rotation on the other axes, uh, which I'll do just to make it look a little less uh, perfect um, and just kind of madness and unorganized uh, cloners. So if I keyframe this, uh, you just click here, or if you're in a previous version, um, I think maybe R14 or something would be, uh, wouldn't have this feature, but you can, you have to control click onto this, and if you want to deselect, you have to click shift and then click, but in this version, you can just freely uh, click without having to use any uh, command or shift buttons. So now that we've done that, we can go over here, and then I'm going to put this up to like 360. Uh, keyframe it once again, go back to the start, and as you can see, got this cloner spinning like crazy. I'm also just going to deselect the uh, the step for the moment just to speed up uh, my work. And then I'm going to go to the tube, and this is how I'm going to create the beginning sequence where all the different bits unravel. And then we're going to click on Object, and then Z, and then increase the inner radius, decrease the height, and click on Fill it so we get this rounded tube object. I'm also going to turn up the rotation segments, don't go too high, maybe uh, 50 or 70 or something along those lines. And uh, basically how you do the the little kind of um, contraction thing majiggy is you go into slice and then mess around with the to angle or the from angle either or. So I'm going to keyframe this, can have it at zero. Maybe we'll go 60 frames in, oops, this is in frames two seconds in. Also if you want to change the, the time, uh, the time units on this, what you do is you could do control or command E to bring up your preferences, go to units animation unit and frames or seconds, which I'm going to be using seconds on this, but normally I use frames. Uh, just because it's kind of an easier thing, it's an easier unit to work with when you're working with um, exporting pictures and stuff like that. So as you see, it's going to just come into a absolutely completely a whole object there. Uh, and that's the wrong way around, so I'm going to move these about. Just drag these about using your mouse. And you can select both of them by doing 
a drag on the timeline and then double click to get rid of that. Just a little tip. So as you can see, got that done. And now we can put this in a cloner. As you can see, a lot of cloners involved in this. <laughs> uh, and now what we can do is I don't remember exactly how I did this, but I think I I think I put these into uh, a linear and then also a step eventually and then I also put this on render instances put in another cloner and we're going to go for radial this time mm, that's kind of cool um, and then what you can do is you can put this into you can put a step into this I mean, I don't think this is ex exactly how I did this, but uh, messing around with it is basically how I created it. And then, if I just zoom through this, just a simple camera movement through this, you can see these are all going one by one. And now we can make this a lot more random, as we can duplicate bit uh, bits of these tubes by holding Command or Control and then dragging up. And then we can displace uh, these randomly so just move around the keyframes it's annoying because uh, the rest of this is all an automatic process and this is kind of just manual copy and pasting so yep there we go something like that and then we can have a cool transition obviously it was a bit slower for me but um, yeah now if we put on the step at the bottom grab a camera and we go into the camera's perspective by clicking here and go to the coordinates and we'll zero out X and Y tab through all of these and zero out all the rotations and what we can do is we can up our zoom uh, We'll go and keyframe this here, 180 on the Z, keyframe it again, and then we'll go to like, we'll go to the uh, 90, so that's 3 seconds in if you're doing 30 FPS. Also there is a problem with this where the objects do get left, but you could animate the the objects to scale down to nothing after this happens. I'll do it for one object. I mean, I probably should have done this uh, at the beginning, but I, this, I created this intro a while ago, so I don't really remember all the specifics of it. And then I keyframed there and I made sure that my uh, Z rotation was zeroed out. And as you can see, got a good animation there. So if we click on one of these, I'll show you how to basically do it. What you do is you go to the last keyframe select all of these scale points, click the keyframe, go one frame forward and then we'll zero all of these out and then keyframe once again. So if I if I unchecked all of these, it should be gone at that point. Just delete all of them. Don't know why it's still showing. Alright, okay. I think what the problem is, is if you go into the cloner and then go to fix object uh, then it will allow you to control the uh, specifics of the coordinates inside this tube. Just be careful not to change around these coordinates here, make sure it's just the, the scale. So once we've got this, there we go. I mean it's kind of, it's kind of a really sudden animation and I would probably make it smoother by just um, messing around with the timeline and stuff like that. But that is the basics, or the basis of this uh, model. So if you guys enjoyed, uh, make sure to go and check out my other videos. Remember to subscribe, like, uh, comment for more tutorials. Um, I'll probably get around to them in a few weeks because these are obviously pre-recorded. Um, so yeah, I've got an entire week series. There's one day left. Uh, so go go and check out all those other videos. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.